Hey guys, today we will take a closer look at another new module from the Geodesics collection, Torus, a crazy mixer, attenuator, filter. So let's really start with understanding the basic functionality of Torus. We have on each side eight inputs and seven outputs in the center and you can see that the lines um, showing all the different connections so the inputs to the outputs the outputs to the outputs the inputs to the inputs and so on um, so here i have an lfo for example um, and i will connect it to the first input and now out of the first output we will get this lfo now with the main knob i can attenuate it to the left or I can amplify it to the right. Very nice. Now, if you look at the original waveform of the LFO itself, um, so this will be the pink trace and the blue trace is after Taurus. And um, we will see that the signal coming out of Taurus is already somewhat attenuated. You can see this here. And it will continue to get attenuated as much as the output is further away from the input. So you can see this. This is the second output now you can see the signal is even more attenuated and it will get more and more attenuated as we go further down or further away from the input and you can see the last output is already really attenuated and this is the behavior of torus in the first mode the red mode which is called decay so as further away the output from the signal is it will be more attenuated and this will be the same with any input so if i take the lfo let's say here to the center now we have the first output um, down or first output up it will be the same but as further away we go from the input or from the signal let's uh, say it's getting more and more attenuated now things start to get really interesting when using more than one signal so here i have another lfo this time set to output a triangle wave and its uh, frequency is also lower and when sending it to another input of torus their level will be set again depending on the proximity of the outputs so let's take this triangle wave let's put it um, here for example now this will be the first let's take the original lfo out so this will be the first output we can attenuate also the signal a bit so now we get more of the sine wave and as further down we go you can see the wave is starting to change and we get more and more of the triangle wave or the effect of the triangle wave and if we add yet another signal let's take the square wave and let's put it on the other side we get an even more interesting result so now both of them will be mixed and crossfade with a triangle wave and you can see the sort of shapes we get now this was the first mode decay but we have another mode related to this behavior the green mode which is called constant and in this case the signals will not be attenuated but rather mixed fully regardless of the proximity to the outputs so if you use again only one signal we will get a multiplier so now we have seven copies of the same lfo let's just take the attenuator all the way up and change this to the green mode so we have exactly the same signal seven copies of it exactly the same never mind uh, from which output we take it and again we can amplify or attenuate the signal and when using more than one signal torus will act as a unity mixer so let's take another let's take the triangle wave let's put it here for example and now those outputs in between will be mixed and they will all be the same never mind from which output we take them they will be mixed at unity gain now the inputs are normalized which means that if i go uh, below the mix section we get here only the triangle wave but if i send now the square wave to the second line of inputs they will be mixed because this input is being normalized to all the other inputs on the right 
which means that also here there is a square wave so both will be mixed but if we don't want this behavior we can just connect a dummy cable I take it here from the VCA it sends nothing so um, the this input will be cut here and now this input which is again nothing will be normalized downwards now there is another mode to Taurus a filter mode so let's have a look at this mode for a second okay so here we have the even VCO and let's set Taurus to the third mode the blue mode filter mode and let's send a sawtooth wave to the first input of Taurus and let's listen to the first output so we get a sawtooth wave you can see it here on the scope and you can see it also here on the analyzer now as much as we get further down the outputs the high frequencies of the signal will get more and more attenuated just like when using a low pass filter take a look also here on the analyzer so here we have the lowest point Now if you connect the signal to the lowest input as much as we go higher through the outputs the low frequencies will be attenuated just like when using a, a high pass filter So if you connect the signal somewhere in the middle, in the center of the module, the lower outputs will act as a low pass filter, and the higher outputs will act as a high pass filter. Now also here things get really interesting when combining a few signals so I have here another even VCO it's differently tuned and let's send another wave to the other side of inputs let's go with the even wave so the waves are mixed and we can set one to have a low pass effect and the other to have a high pass effect so let's do something like this actually so now the sawtooth will be will get a low pass effect because you go down from the input but the even um, shape the even waveform will get a high pass effect because we go up from the input from the signal Okay, so let's really start building a patch and seeing all of these features in action. Okay, so let's start with a sequence. I will use ions, again geodesics. Let's run it with a multiplied clock, every clock multiplied by four. Let's also randomize it in the right click menu. And since the last update, randomizing ions will only randomize the step values and the probability. But let's take the probability all the way down and let's send the blue sequence to quantum to quantize the signal and let's set a nice scale let's go with D F A and B flat as our voice we will use the Voldemar oscillator from Lindenberg research let's send to it the pitch information and let's send its mix output to slap from volt and then to the mixer let's trigger slap with quantum set a nice snappy envelope something like this maybe and let's start mixing some waves let's go with triangle maybe some pulse oh yeah something like this maybe very nice now a really cool thing we can do with Taurus is create sequence variations so if we put Taurus before quantum and send the sequence uh, to first to one of its inputs let's do something like this and just then to quantum let's do this for example 
Since the signal will be attenuated, as further um, uh, we go from the input, we will get a few different but related sequences. So here we have one of them, then another one, and another one. So we have seven variations of the same sequence. Very nice. So let's uh, really use a sequential switch. And we'll use the one from ML, um, which is this one, 8 to 1. And let's send the outputs to the switch first. So let's go 1, 3, 5, let's say. Just mix them a bit. Let's go do something like this. Let's set a 7-step sequence. Let's drive the sequential switch with a divided clock. Every clock divided by 8. And let's send this to quantum. So we have seven variations of the same sequence. Very nice. Let's add another torus. And let's use the FM operator. Let's see, let's turn on its level envelope, set a nice snappy envelope. And let's duplicate this twice, so we have three oscillators. And now let's send both blue and yellow sequences from ions to this torus. Let's do something like this, this will go here, and let's... One, two, three, this will go here, let's say. So now the sequences will uh, crossfade according to the outputs we will use. So again, we get a few different sequences that are somewhat related to one another. So let's use another quantum. I will just duplicate this here. Very nice. And use polyphony to send the three sequences to the oscillators. So first, we will merge the signals to a polyphonic signal. So let's do, let's take one and skip an, out, an output, and this will go to quantum, and then we have to split the signals to the oscillators, so this will go to the first oscillator, to the second, and to the third. Let's also split the gates from quantum, also to the oscillators. Very nice. Now let's see how this will sound like. Send it to the mixer. can of course also attenuate, attenuate this a bit. So this is sequence one, two, very nice. Now we can also modulate this with the black Octasource from Erica Sins. Let's change this to be unipolar. Take the rate down and let's see. One, two, and three. Take the feedback a bit up now. Something like this. Very nice. Okay, let's add a nice bass to this. So I will use again two even VCOs. Let's tune one to D, so two semitones up. And let's lower its octave, let's say something like this. And the other one, let's tune to A, so three um, semitones down, negative three. Let's also lower its octave a bit, maybe something like this. Now let's mix them into another torus, but this time um, we will use um, constant mode, so the green mode. So let's take um, a sawtooth wave here, let's say, and let's take a sine wave to the other side. Let's look at it also on the scope, just so we see what is going on. Let's take, let's say, this output. 
And let's mix another even waveform, let's say here. Very nice, so this is the wave shape we get. And let's send this through another torus, but this time in filter mode. And let's take... Um, let's take this output for example. Let's see how this will sound like. Let's go to the mixer, solo this for a second. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Indeed. So again, as we go further down, we get a low pass effect. Oh baby. Now let's add some movement by morphing between the different signals with pulsars, again geodesics. Let's send all seven outputs to the upper pulsar, or pulsar, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's use an LFO to drive this pulsar. Um, let's see, let's send it to the bipolar rotation input. You can see it's already running. Let's activate supernova mode, so it will scan randomly between the signals. Let's send this now to the mixer. Oh yes! Let's add even more motion by sending a square wave from the um, Voldemar oscillator to the lower pulsars. Let's activate the cosmic void. So it will scan also through the empty inputs or outputs, let's say. Let's again activate super nova mode, so it will do this also randomly. And let's send one output to the filter torus. Let's go here, let's say. Oh yeah, maybe here. Let's leave it here. It will sound like this. Very nice. Cool, so you can see the vast amount of sonic possibilities available to us with this little um, <laughs> but deep module. Another geodesics classic. Very cool. And that's it! Like always, there will be a link in the description to this patch. Feel free to download it and take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.